Uh, once again, my name is Michael Cohen, and I'm doing another little presentation today. Now, once upon a time, this YouTube was Australia's third largest or third most watched YouTube. This YouTube channel, should I say, was Australia's third largest or third most watched YouTube channel. And you know, I used to make fairly sort of uh, you know edited videos, but times have changed, and I just use this now. Uh, this this uh, channel as a place to kind of ramble and rant on with no particular purpose. Now, today, now I've been doing a lot of videos on the issue of Jewish identity and uh, the Jewish religion, all that sort of thing lately. And this is going to be a video on a completely different topic, and that is philosophy. Now, I, or should I say a philosophical topic. Now, I studied philosophy at uni once. And uh, I have to say, I was not very impressed with the calibre of the lecturers. They didn't seem very, very, I couldn't say they really seemed like intellectuals. They weren't very interested. Uh, I didn't see them as you know, great philosophers at all. They didn't encourage any real thought process. They, they, they weren't really interested in the course at all. You had a whole lot of people doing it, just take a unit in something. There was a lot of rote learning. And, you know, overall, I wasn't very impressed. But in saying that, I nevertheless took a real interest in philosophy. Now... People that take an interest in philosophy and stuff like cognitive science eventually become often fairly interested in the, 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 the question of sentience of consciousness, that is the mystery of consciousness, human consciousness or other consciousness, whatever. This, you know, because consciousness seems at first to be something that can't even physically exist. You cannot physically explain consciousness. consciousness. It seems like something that's impossible to exist. It's it's a mystery. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And, and, you know, the proof that we have of consciousness is our own sentience, which is obviously, I think, therefore I am, right? And, you know, it just doesn't make physical sense. But I'm going to argue that the biggest mystery is not consciousness. It's not consciousness. The biggest mystery is something that gets, in, in my opinion, or it gets incorrectly labelled as personal identity, but that's not really what it is. Right? And that is the question, and this question, you know, hasn't, and please, someone correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm missing out on some, uh, some literature. No philosopher has really tackled this question. It's kind of the white ele elephant in the room, and that is the question, it's not so much how am I conscious, like how the hell, you know, am I a sentient being? The question is, why am I sentient as a guy that was born in Australia in 1970 called Michael Cohen? And uh, why am I sentient as someone born in the 12th century in China or as a dog or as my, one of my siblings or as, as a guy I went to school with? What is the process? There must be a process that led me, you know, almost someone deciding that I was to experience sentience in the form of this guy called Michael Cohen, born in 1970 in Australia, right? That is, in my opinion, the biggest mystery, not the actual nature of sentience, but the, the why I am sentient as this particular person and not a mosquito. And you can't say that's, you know, you can't put that down to personal identity. Because, I mean, there are huge differences between, I mean, no matter how, you know, no matter what the environmental uh, factors were, me and a mosquito were never going to have the same self-perception. We are different beings. Why does one person get to, you know, one being get to experience consciousness as a guy in a prosperous uh, Western country and another being as a fruit fly that only has a day to live? I'm not saying he sees that the fruit fly sees any of that. You know, is, you know the amount we have to live just, you know, this, in the words of the Hanson song, just just goes by like that, right? It's exactly the same. Right? But um, why do I experience uh, consciousness as this particular person? Now, I think asking this question about nature of sentience before bothering with this question that I've just mentioned is, I mean, it's all pointless. But it's pointless. It's like putting the cart before the horse. You're not going to get anywhere with the issue of what is consciousness till you come to understand this issue, why I am conscious as this particular person. And it's not 
really a personal identity issue. But again, if someone thinks I'm talking shit, just tell me. Now, the thing is, right now, I am not a solipsist. A solipsist is someone that you know believes that they because they can only um, they can only perceive their own consciousness, right? Um, they believe that they're it. Now, the thing is, and I've got to admit, I'm not a solipsist. I well and truly believe other people exist. But I should be a solipsist, and everyone should be, because it's logical. It's, it's the, the way I say it, the absurd thing is, not solipsism, because you know a lot of people don't like the idea of solipsism. It's a bit of a dirty word in philosophy. Right? And uh, the absurd thing is not solipsism. It's the, 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 the extreme likelihood that it's not the case. That's the miracle that I can actually exist as a fully sentient being, only aware of my existence, and be chatting with, say, my mother, and she's in the exact same position. Right? Now, the thing is, what human beings... See, because human beings like to connect themselves with things around them. They, they don't want to feel alone, right? And they're constantly connecting themselves with people and, you know, things around them. Right? Trying to sort of you know, forge, and, forge a connection between them and something external to them. But the reality, unfortunately, is that the only thing we have a connection to, although, again, I am not a solipsist, right, the only thing we have a connection to is ourselves. Now, I adore my family, but even our family, we, we literally, we're born, we've got no idea why we're born, it just all passes, you know, before you know it, it's over, Right, and in this time, all these different people and ideas kind of stream past you, and some of them are familiar, some of them are not. Truth is, we don't really have any connection to anything outside us. And the whole human existence, the whole human existence is all about humans are all alone in this world, just like any other sentient being, and they're trying to forge a connection to things around them to give themselves their lives meaning. Now, even this topic I talk about, Israel and Palestine, right? now, I'm not an activist, and this is why, because at the end of the day, when I drop dead, Israel will no longer exist in any shape, manner. For me, I will never interact with Israel again. I will never interact with the Jews again, Palestine, Donald Trump, all of this will be gone. You know, when I'm dead, it's all, from, from as far as I'm concerned, vanished. I am just passing through and seeing all this stuff, and, you know, it's got really nothing to do with me. And when I'm dead, none of it will ever exist. I will never interact with one of these topics again. Now, I'm not unique. In fact, I'm far from you. Every human being is in exactly the same situation. When they drop dead, all these things that matter to them will be gone. Now, it's interesting in that song, um, the, ha the famous Hanson song. I mean, I totally agree with the verse where he says, you know... Um, turn your back and it's gone so fast. Like, that's just totally true. But then he says, hold on to the ones who really care because in the end, they'll be the ones that are there or something like that. Right? I, I don't, like, I get it, but I don't entirely agree with it because no one's actually there, right? And, um, and, that, and you know, the Hansons, they're Christians, right? And that was the whole idea. That's why people t really latched on to the Hebrew faith because it, it's the ultimate faith. See, the whole act of being a Westerner or a Christian is, in, is an act of being in massive denial of reality and creating this entire delusion, this entire delusion, right? This imaginary world that may, gives your life meaning, that you know, things matter. Australia, the nation, I really care who's in power. I really give a shit whether it's the liberal. You know, you've got, and, and, and the Jewish, the Hebrew spirituality did that. It gave these, it gave people, this idea that, you know, things matter. We're not just passing through pointlessly, but we actually are passing through pointlessly. Um, so I don't believe that when I die, I'm going to be taken to some room and there's going to be a guy there. He's going, Mike, you know, you've spent your life wondering what the meaning of life is. And now I'm going to tell you. He, they're actually, all that's going to happen is I'm going to spend my life, you know, pondering the meaning of life. And then I'm going to drop dead and never find out anything. That, that's it. Which, when you think about it, it's kind of, you know, it makes you wonder if the person that created this whole thing, you know, is a hoaxer. Because that is a cruel hoax. But that, that, that's for another video. But I don't, that's how I see life. I don't believe I'll ever discover any of this stuff. I'll just spend my life thinking about it. 
but I'm not going to discover it, right? And uh, and yet, but but you're not going to get anywhere till this question is answered. Why? Who? What is this process? There must be somewhere in existence a process, and that, that there must, by definition, be a process that led me to be sent in as myself and not someone else. But thanks for listening.